Hi there, my name is Devin Rogers and I'm a botanist with the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves. Today I'm going to be taking you on, on a tour of some dry limestone woodlands in the Frankfurt area, uh, mostly in uh, Franklin County. Now this first site that I'm looking at is on a southwest facing slope above a side tributary to the Kentucky River. And what we typically see in these environments is that you have steep slopes. Of course, this isn't the steepest that we'll see. Um, but we get a bunch of uh, mossy rocks, oftentimes very highly erodible soils. Now, even though these are drier sites, the soil is still really rich, really dark. Um, just these, uh, these loams and clays uh, derived from limestone. So in the spring, we still get a pretty rich flora. And it's kind of surprising that this is uh, what we would consider a, a dry slope with just how, uh, how covered it is with uh, sp spring ephemeral wildflowers that also grow in uh, mesic stands. One thing that's important to note about these systems is like everywhere else in the bluegrass, uh, we have uh, some severe invasion of honeysuckle. And I'm gonna just pan upslope. You can just see how closed in it is going upslope. And then down below here, where we've been actively managing for honeysuckle, it's just wide open. Um, this becomes a problem because there's so many, uh, so many interesting things that grow up here. We have um, some of our common wildflowers like Pacara abuveda. Um, also, not quite up yet, uh, is Delphinium tricorni. Of course, you know this this species is pretty common throughout a, a number of different rich forest types, but we do see it in some higher abundance. Um, up on these uh, drier slopes. Um, some other common things like Spring Beauty, Claytonia virginica. And some of these Dodecatheon aren't fully up yet. Here's one that's in bloom. Just a remarkable pendulous flower that reflects petals big basil rosette and there's just tons of it in here um, and it's not quite in bloom like a number of other things this this grassy plant or grass looking plant is a type of lily um, called Camassia siloides and it's unfortunate that's not in bloom yet because this this slope uh, will just be covered uh, with Camassia but there's, uh, there's still some interesting rare species here. Just noted one, it's a federally threatened herb in the Brassicaceae, uh, the mustard family. Um, this is not yet in bloom. But this is Physeria globosa, globe bladder pod. And it's gonna end up having a, a long raceme of yellow flowers that mature into these uh, globe shaped uh, silicles, which is a fruit type of the mustard family. But those globe shaped uh, silicles is how it gets its name, uh, bladder pod. Um, and again, unfortunate it's not in bloom right now, but there's um, at least 50 to 100 plants uh, probably on this slope, maybe more. Um, and another thing that's not quite up yet that is quite common on this slope which is uh, another rare species, not federally protected, but state rare in Kentucky. Um, and this is Eastern Yampa, Peridoridia americana. The canopy in some of these communities is traditionally gonna be um, Eastern red cedar, Juniperus virginiana, and uh, usually I don't know if you can see this tree here. Um, it's a Quercus muhlenbergii, but you get a lot more Quercus muhlenbergii and Juniperus and uh, uh, Blue Ash, Fraxinus quadrangulata, on these slopes than you do some of the other areas uh, of the bluegrass. Let's take a walk around and see what else we can find. 
Oh, here we got our Cecil Trilliums, which may have been mentioned in some of the other Wildflower Week uh, videos. Um, just such a beautiful little native trillium. It's growing next to a, another great specimen, this Dodecathion medii. All right, so I was really hoping to find uh, this really charismatic uh, Silene. Um, uh, they, uh, I guess it's not really a fire pink, um, but there's a species of Silene uh, in the chickweed family that grows up here, um, and it's just not in bloom yet. Um, it's Silene caroliniana, uh, what I think is subspecies Warii. It has these beautiful uh, light pink flowers, occasionally white. Um, and I'll show you show you a picture of it and talk about it, but um, couldn't find any in bloom today. So let's move on to the next site and see what else we can find in bloom. All right, we're out here at a new uh, new site, looking around for some neat plants that grow on these dry limestone uh, woodlands. And this is a much steeper site. Um, there's a lot more loose um, loose limestone, almost almost talus-like in some areas. But at this site, you know, the trees really only get to be about 50 foot tall. A lot of them are very small. Um, not sure if that's from the extreme conditions, uh, stunting their growth, um, but the trees are very short, gnarly. There is some ash mortality in here. Um, but we get uh, not only a woodland because of that open canopy, um, but then as we move down to the other stratas of the community, we get a lot more uh, native shrubs um, and then a pretty rich uh, herb layer. Again, some of this stuff is, you know, just now bolting. So we have some early spring wildflowers that have already gone to fruit or already even dropped their fruit like this. The Lictrum dioecum. Um, let's look around and see what we can find. All right, now we're up here on this high woodland, a uh, little bit of a drier site, and along with some interesting herbs, there are also some interesting shrubs that like these these dry habitats. One is uh, sweet sumac or fragrant sumac, uh, Rus aromatica. Um, this is a cool species. You can find it on dry limestone outcrops and woodlands, as well as glades. Um, you know, one herb that, you know, I, I hope we can find some in flower, um, but it's it's starting to bolt and it's going, going to be uh, flowering very soon. Uh, this is yellow pimpernel, Tinidia integrima. And this is another one that you know, while it doesn't always or, or only grow on uh, dry sites, you find it in uh, pretty good abundance. Um, and it's, uh, it's one of the dominant plants that you're seeing growing throughout this one area. Some uh, cool things that are going on in, uh, in the herbaceous layer. Of course, again, another thing that's not in flower yet, but with these uh, really wide, uh, Oh, widely ovate leaves um, and a more, uh, more truncate base. Sometimes it can be chordate. Um, this is Solidago sphacillata. Um, is another thing that likes uh, these dry upper slopes and woodlands. And as we go over here, pretty cool violet. Uh, I believe this is Viola subsinuata. Uh, you'll notice it has way more of these very deeply dissected lobes, usually seven to nine. Um, a pretty little violet flower with hairs on the inside. Um, there's a lot of it on this slope. All right, now there's one woody shrub that I was walking past that I've been looking for. Um, and I didn't notice it, so I put my hand on it for balance and got pricked by these stipular thorns. It's pretty cool. It's uh, blooming right now. This is Xanthoxylum americanum. 
Um, sometimes people call it toothache tree. There's a lot of uh, chemical compounds in it to prevent uh, herbivory. And I think if you chew on a little bit of the leaves, it'll uh, make your mouth go numb. Not that I'm recommending that, definitely not. But um, has these stipular thorns and eventually has a compound, innately compound leaf. Um, really beautiful flowers. Now I know, I know you can find Ohio buckeye in a number of different communities, but it also likes some of these dry woodlands. Um, I just love that flower. Oh boy, this is exciting right here. Um, so we're looking at another rare plant. Um, this is a species of wild rye called Svensson's wild rye, which grows in these, um, these dry limestone woodlands. Um, and it shares a distribution pattern uh, with both the globe bladder pod uh, as well as uh, uh, bronze rock crests, um, in that uh, these plants grow here in the, the upper bluegrass or outer bluegrass um, and then jump all the way down to the Nashville basin of uh, Tennessee. I think as you see all this grass that is growing throughout this one site, um, I think the majority of that is this Svensson's wild rye. Um, and it looks a lot like Elemis hystrix, except instead of the awns coming out at a straight angle with the uh, florets, the florets are more pressed, meaning up against uh, the, ra the rachis, uh, the stem, and then the awns bend off like that. So that's the, the easiest way to tell um, Svensson's wild rye from... Um, just regular old uh, Elmis Hystrix. Oh boy, we hit the jackpot. Now, as I've been walking through here, I noticed uh, a lot of individuals of globe bladder pod, Fisari globosa. Um, but there's a couple plants here that have started to bloom. Just beautiful. the classic uh, mustard flower, um, but really exciting with everything that has been just barely about to bloom. We got a flowering individual, Fisera globosa. All right, we found another species in bloom. Um, this is a spiderwort, um, type of spiderwort that we will find a lot of times in these uh, drier woodlands. This is uh, Tradescantia subaspera. And the one way you can differentiate this species from um, the also widespread Tradescantia virginiana is that the leaf becomes constricted as it reaches this subpetiolar sheath, which is this feature here. Um, and if I was to take that that whole sheath off, um, the, the width of the sheath, uh, if you cut it open, would be still narrower than the leaf blade. There's some other characters like stomata de density on the, on the leaves, but I'm pretty confident this is uh, Tradescantia subaspera. Beautiful leaf flower. And I just noticed uh, a neat plant that I guess does grow in these, uh, these outcrop communities, but I haven't seen any today. Um, this is a native cactus. Uh, this is a uh, Opuntia cespitosa. Um, and I'm not going to touch it because I don't want any of those glockids to those tiny little prickly hairs and those nodes. I don't want any of those in my finger, but kind of neat to run across a uh, native cactus up here. Makes sense with how dry it and rocky it is. Oh, we got another another flower in bloom. This, of course, is the more common 
uh, species of Silene uh, fire pink, Silene virginica. Um, doesn't always grow in these dry sites, but uh, really beautiful red flower. All right, I'm out here on the slopes above Elkhorn Creek looking at a perennial draba. This is Draba remosissima. Very different from some of the other annual drabas that are more weedy. Um, this perennial herb grows along dry, rocky outcrop woodlands um, in Kentucky. In the bluegrass, we get, a, we get a lot of populations around Elkhorn Creek and over top some of the tributaries to the Kentucky River, but just a really pretty little herb. Producing those classic Brassicaceae saliques. 